Well, this December, we are covering an issue from Nintendo Power. We're now pretty much evened up with 25 years ago for Nintendo Power 91 with for December of 1996. We've got some N64 games to review this time, though it's a pretty light turnout. Our cover game for this issue is Killer Instinct Gold for the N64. In the letters column, we have a letter complaining about all the retro game compilations. Well, on the one hand, they're not going away exactly. Uh, on the other hand, for this upcoming console generation, they're less so going to be a Nintendo consoles. Handhelds, maybe, particularly once we get to the GBA, but not consoles. Um, more of a heavy presence on, you know, the PlayStation. In the power charts, the N64 rankings now appear to have some feedback from actual user data, but no real new titles as yet. We do have some new titles on the Super Nintendo side, though, with NHL 96 and Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3. The N64 installment of the Killer Instinct series is out with Killer Instinct Gold. We have notes on the 3D level designs and the new combat mechanics like pressure moves and manual double hits. Perhaps more importantly, unlike the Super Nintendo version, this version of the game has a training mode. We also have notes on each of the characters and optimal strategies for each of them. First off, it bears mentioning that Killer Instinct Gold's training mode is almost perfect. It works really well at slowly building you from basic general move concepts, not like the better punch and kick, but like your basic special moves into more complicated mechanics, and then in turn building off of knowledge that you've already been taught to help you understand how to string moves together and why certain moves work well together, like taking a auto hit stringing it with a combo with a special move into another manual double hit, that sort of thing. That said, it needs a few significant treats. The first is that you need to be able to keep doing a particular training session if you're not confident that you're mastering the move. That is, if you manage to pull off the move once, but you're not sure that you're able to do again, like say a dragon punch motion or that sort of thing, that be able to have to just keep doing it so you can be confident that you've got it down before moving on to the next thing. Related to doing the Dragon Punch motions, the second being that if a particular move they're teaching requires something that you're just not good at and like physically not able to do very well, like for example me in Dragon Punch motion, it would be nice to have the option to just skip that move and come back to it later. Other than that, the game plays remarkably well, though I do have the minor gripe that with the C buttons maps to the fierce medium attacks of both punch and kick. I ended up focusing on those more and neglecting my light attacks because I have to move my thumb out of the way more to hit those. I understand the choice considering how the N64 controller is designed, and it is alleviated somewhat with the wireless Tribute 64, or just the standard one. Um, which does take some steps to mitigate some of those issues, but still a thing. The Shadows of the Empire comic continues, and I'll be covering it on my other show, Legends of the Force, in due time. The Shadows of the Empire game, on the other hand, is finally getting some more extensive coverage, with more information on the various gameplay modes of the game, along with descriptions of some of the levels. Now, the art, the coverage promises more of... Uh, expanded coverage of the game next issue and it's on the cover next issue so honestly i'm going to cover it myself then we haven't had a sports scene column in a while and we have a lot of super nintendo and game boy ea games cover this issue particularly madden 97 college football 97 nba live 97 and nhl 97 and much like a lot of these other ones i'm honestly going to give this a miss because this is generally the versions of these games for older platforms. Um, once we start getting into newer versions of these games for like the N64, I'll get more involved into checking those out because we're getting into sort of new and uncharted territory there. Speaking of sports games, we finally have our first N64 sports game with Wayne Gretzky's 3D hockey. We have notes on gameplay modes and camera angles. And apparently, if you're playing in arcade mode, you even have some NBA Jam level flashy moves in there uh, just to shake things up. Now, Wayne Gretzky's 3D hockey plays remarkably well. The controls have a 
degree of inertia feels right with the ice in this game's controls, and it feels pretty easy to keep track of who has the puck and who the player is in control of. And just to make things better, the computer-controlled characters on your team actually play competently. The problem is the game rubber bands very aggressive, and it will just start kicking in with a single point lead. I understand wanting to have close games. The problem is if your rubber banding is too aggressive, it actually can prevent players from improving because then they don't know if they're developing good habits or not. Um, to show that you're developing good habits, you need to consistently kind of work to an extent before then having the difficulty crank up a little bit and have the, have the opponent play a little smarter. Now, speaking of sports games, um, and ones that, get, that can get flashy, we have one more 16-bit title in the NBA Jam series, but not with the NBA Jam name. Same engine, though. It's NBA Hang Time. We have a bunch of little notes on the game mechanic revisions. Now, if you played NBA Jam, you should be pretty familiar with NBA Hang Time. Same mechanics, same engine, um, a lot of these even same announced calls, like players being on fire, monster ducks, dunks, big flashy 2-1-2 two -two plays, no fouls, and some very clear-cut rubber banding under the hood, now with some fully updated rosters from the 95-96 uh, season. So, for example, the Portland Trailblazers no longer have Clyde Drexler and have Arvidas Sabonis, but they haven't picked up Rasheed Wallace yet. Now, I thought the game controlled all right. I thought it was a little rusty with the controls and a little honestly disappointed in the game that there wasn't anything in the game to give me a refresher as far as to take a quick look and see what the controls are again or give me an option to reconfigure or remap the controls. But otherwise, it played all right. For some games that we've previously covered, we have some more level maps for Wave Race 64 this issue. And same for Donkey Kong Country 3. And in Counselor's Corner, we have a bunch of questions about items and types of items for Lufia 2. We have more Mortal Kombat coverage this issue with Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 for the Super Nintendo. We have more stages, more characters, a two-on-two -two gameplay mode, and brutalities. And the article has complete coverage with full roster notes. So, I don't know if this is like an anti-piracy, we detected you're not running original hardware crap that in the code, or if it's something else. Um, but Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 for the SNES starts off with a pretty normal difficulty level, and then proceeds to thoroughly stomp you into the ground hard. Um, for me, my next opponent was Smoke, who has both an invisibility power and Raiden's teleport attack, which the AI can use unfailingly in combination, but which a human player would have some real problems with, particularly since the player who is using an invisible smoke can't really intuitively tell where he is either, necessarily. So, yeah, that's a giant pile of BS. And I don't know if this is an issue that will come up if you're using, say, a Retro 5 or any other um, retro clone SNES on a chip console, or even potentially on a something like um, some of the uh, FPGA equipped clone consoles. So be advised. We have more coverage of Marvel Super Heroes War of the Gems with more level maps and gameplay notes. And I've previously reviewed this game, so um, yeah, we're just going to move on. Our second to last title is Tasmania for the Game Boy, a platformer based on the cartoon series, which I'm pretty sure I reviewed back in 2018, since this looks a lot like the game I reviewed back then, and I can't find anything otherwise in terms of looking for games. We also have uh, finally a couple more Game Boy Jeopardy games. These are, again, kind of eh when you're playing solo. These tend to work better if you're playing with a friend. Um, because you don't have the computer's buzzer reflexes. So, yeah. In the now playing column, uh, no also rans this issue, actually. It's just, just the stuff that we've covered already. 
And in the pack watch, we have on the way Mario Kart 64 with a bunch of info on the game, which is particularly of note because the original Super Mario Kart, I'm not going to say it was a late title, but we're pretty firmly into the middle of the uh, Super Nintendo's life when that came out. So this is very much a case of the Nintendo with the N64 pushing this out towards the front as their uh, showcase bit of technology. My pick of the issue is Killer Instinct Gold. It's honestly a very solid fighting game, and... Were it not for some of the stuff that would come up later, making clear that the N64 isn't as hot for fighting games as we were hoping, um, it would lead to the station. Oh, okay. Maybe the N64 is fighting its, its fighting game feet. Getting an additional, if we'd gotten something alongside this, like a Toshinden port or something like that, that would might even clinched it more. But as it is, if you've got an N64 and, or an ability to play N64 games, through some other platform like the well eventual hyper um not hyper again the eventual polymega n64 expansion or what have you it would make a really fun game to play either on your own or more even more so with roommates and friends now next time 1997 begins and we cover sh finally shadows of the empire for the n64 Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe, and also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any f future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks, also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that.